Hi folks, this is Shefik. Today we are going to implement elliptic curve LGML encryption algorithm in Python programming language from scratch. But before we begin, please like the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. This crypto system is a combination of elliptic curve cryptography and LGML public key encryption algorithm. Similar to regular LGML encryption algorithm, Bob will encrypt a message with the public key of Alice and Alice will decrypt that message with her private key. But in contrast to regular LGML algorithm, here we are going to encrypt a point on elliptic curve instead of a plain message. Besides elliptic curve LGML algorithm offers same level of accuracy with regular LGML encryption algorithm with smaller case sizes. Elliptic curves can be in many different forms. The most popular ones are voice dress, coblets, adverts curves and its variation twisted adverts curves. But in this video, we are going to adopt elliptic curves in various transform. You can adopt coblets or adverts curves in your implementation. Firstly, the equation for elliptic curves in various transform is y squared is equal to x to the its third power plus ax plus b. Let's take a note for this equation in our notebook y squared is equal to x to the power of 3 plus a times x plus b. This is going to be our elliptic curve equation. Thereafter, we are going to use addition formulas for various stress curve. This is the addition formula if the points p and q are different points on the curve. Let's implement this addition formula in our Python program. I'm going to create a function at points and this is going to get p and q points and these are going to be tuples thereafter i'm going to extract x and y coordinates of p and q as x1 y1 for point p and x2 y2 for point q addition formula becomes different if the both p and q points are same point as you can see here but the just beta calculation is going to change in both point addition and point doubling so in this add points function i'm going to check p and q points are same or not if x1 is equal to x2 and y1 is equal to y2 thereafter this is going to be a point doubling and for doubling a point beta is going to be here beta is going to be three times x1 squared plus a and over two times y1 otherwise if p and q are different points we are going to calculate this beta value otherwise beta is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 once we calculate the beta value thereafter we are going to use the same formula for x3 and y3 calculation for both point addition and doubling a point here x3 is going to be beta squared minus x1 minus x2 and y3 is going to be beta times x1 minus x3 minus y1 and this function is going to return x3 y3 tuple those addition formulas for elliptic curves are designed for real numbers as you can guess this division is going to be a float number on the other hand in elliptic curve cryptography we are working on finite fields in other words all points are going to be integers for some modulos so i'm going to append here a integer modulo p and i'm going to move those denominators to numerators with its multiplicative inverse value here i'm going to change the sign to multiplication thereafter find the multiplicative inverse of this value for modulo p similarly i'm going to do it for this denominator find at multiplicative inverse value for modulo p and finally in x3 and y3 calculation i'm going to find values for modulo p 
then let's decide the elliptic curve configuration for our experiment and we are going to use the same elliptic curve with bitcoin protocol which is SECP256K1 and this blog post you can find the required configuration values we are going to use this curve and a value in our equation is going to be 0 and b value is going to be 7 as mentioned here also we are going to use the this base point g and it's going to be a public point i'm copying this x and y coordinate values for the base point g g is going to be this is going to be at x coordinate and it's going to be at y coordinate also modulo and order order defines the number of points on our finite field they are mentioned here we are going to use those values directly i'm going to say p for modulo and n for order of the curve we can confirm that this point is going to be on our curve let's create a function this on curve and it's going to get a point p and also modulo p lowercase thereafter i'm going to check this equation y square is equal to x to the power of 3 plus a times x plus b if this is satisfied then this point p is on our curve of course we have to check with both left and right hand sides for modulo p thereafter this calculation might be greater than the our modulo p that's why i'm going to append p as third argument it's going to find the x to the power of 3 for modulo p by the way we haven't assigned the x and y values they are coming from point p let's check our base point is on our curve point g is on the curve and this is true this means that this base point is on our curve moreover we already implemented at points function and let's point base point to base point itself and it's going to be point 2g and let's see what point 2g is we can confirm that this addition point is on the curve here let's call this on curve function and pass x3 y3 tuple and also modulo p and recalculate point 2g and as we can see this doesn't return any error this means that this point 2g is on our curve now i'm going to delete the calculation of point 2g and build a for loop for i in range from 0 to 10 and i'm going to create a temporary point at its initial value is going to be base point itself thereafter in this for loop i'm going to call at points function and add base point to temporary point and this is going to be temporary points new value then uh, i can start this for loop from 2 because i'm going to print here ig is going to be 10 point as you can see this is 2g this is 3g and finally this is going to be 19g let's find 9g this value is on our curve and it's 20g here 20 is going to be my private k and i'm going to find 20g and this point is going to be my public k of course my private k value is going to be a large number that's why calculation of this point is going to be computationally hard at this point we have double and at method and with this algorithm we are able to calculate k times base point g much faster than a one by one calculation as illustrated here and basically this algorithm represents the private k value as binary thereafter it applies doubling always for its all bits but if the current bit is equal to one thereafter we are going to apply base point addition as you can see this bit is equal to one and we append the base point p to current calculation but if the current bit is equal to zero thereafter we are going to skip the adding base point now let's implement double and add method apply double and add method and it's going to get a point g this is going to be a tuple thereafter it's going to get a integer value k and finally let's transfer the modulo here k is going to be integer value and we are going to 
firstly transform it to binary call binary function and pass k as input this binary function is going to return a string with this pattern always at first two letters are going to be zero and b that's why i'm going to discard its first two letters start from index 2 to the end thereafter we are going to build a for loop for i in range from 1 it's going to start from 1 because the first bit is going to be discarded as you can see there are 10 bits in this representation but in the rows there are 9 rows so we are going to discard the first one and go to end of the bits and current bit is going to be i2 i plus 1 but this should not be comma in this function i'm going to define target point and its initial value is going to be g itself here we are going to apply doubling always that's why i'm going to call at points function and at target point and target point also we are going to have modulo p argument as input and it's going to be the new value of target point moreover if the current bit value is equal to 1 thereafter i'm going to add the base point g here and after this for loop i'm going to return the target point as a result now let's test this double and add method for some k our base point was g here and let's calculate for example 20 g and our modulo p was p as you can see this is going to be our 20 g value and it's exactly the same value with this line so we don't have to build a for loop and calculate the k times g one by one the good part of this algorithm this double and add method no matter how large the k is we are going to calculate the k times g much faster than the for loop here the light blue represents the double and add method and the dark blue represents the for loop here we designed here so if k value is really large it's going to be hard to calculate it one by one but we are always be able to calculate it with double and add method easily this is called elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem because suppose that q is the public k value and k is our private k and g is the public base point if you know both k and base point g it's very easy to calculate point q but if you know both point q and point g it's computationally hard to extract k because you have to build a for loop as illustrated here and it's really hard so this is called elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem and elliptic curve cryptography depends on the hardness of this so we implemented point addition formulas and also the blunt add method successfully and we built our elliptic curve so i do not need this for loop anymore and finally in double dot add method we should check the target point is on the curve here i'm going to call is on curve function and pass the target point as input point p whereas our modulo was p lowercase now let's focus on the elliptic curve algemal part of the implementation firstly bob is going to select an integer message M and let's say it's the birthday of Alan Turing 23 June and 1912 then he is going to find the corresponding point for M on the elliptic curve and he is going to use the double and add method we just implemented here point is going to be the base point G and integer K is going to be the message and modulus is going to be p lowercase this is going to be the secret bob is going to encrypt the secret instead of the plain message and alice is going to decrypt the cipher text and get this secret value instead of this plain message meanwhile alice is going to generate her private and public k pair k a is going to be the private k of alice and she is going to generate a random number that's why I'm going to import random module here. Thereafter, ka is going to be random dot get random bits 
and we are going to set this value to 256 because this is the recommended case size for elliptic curve cryptography and she is going to calculate her public key and I'm going to name this Q8 and she is going to call double and add method and base point G is going to be the point and integer K is going to be her private K and finally modulus is going to be P modulus. Let's turn back to the Bob site for this encryption is going to generate a random K or lowercase and it's going to be random dot get random bets and let's generate one to eight bet random K the doctor find the corresponding point for this random K similarly he's going to use the blunt at method point is going to be the base point G integer K is going to be this random K and finally modulus is going to be p lowercase this is going to be c1 then bob is going to calculate r times public k of alice q8 and this is going to be c2 and finally bob must append the secret point into c2 that's why c2 is equal to i'm going to call this point addition function and pass point c2 and this secret c1 and c2 pair is going to be the ciphertext and this is going to be sent to alice as you can see the both c1 and c2 are points on our elliptic curve by the way this block refers to encryption and let's focus on the decryption part when alice receives c1 and c2 ciphertext pair she is going to calculate secret prime is going to be c2 minus her private k k8 times c1 here c2 is a point and c1 is a point so we are able to perform k8 times c1 but we don't know how to perform minus operation that's why here we are going to represent this expression as c2 plus because we know how to add points on elliptic curves we have add points function minus her private k times c1 elliptic curves in wires transform are symmetric about x-axis so if you change the sign of its y coordinate we are going to find its negative point i mean that if a point on our wires transform is x and y if we change the sign of at y coordinate we are going to have the point x and minus y addition of these two points is going to be infinite all this is going to find the negative point of c1 and let's name it c1 prime and this is going to be x coordinate of c1 and minus 1 times y coordinate of c1 but this is going to be minus value that's why we are going to find it for modulo p now she's going to calculate her private k times c1 prime by the way minus line should be here so she's going to run this double and add method and the point is going to be c prime and integer k is going to be her private k k8 let's assign this to s prime and finally she's going to add point c2 into this calculation so s prime is going to be we are going to run this at point function and point p is going to be c2 and second point is going to be s prime finally modulo is going to be p lowercase so i just decrypted this point from c1 and c2 pair meanwhile bob has sanded this s value as encrypted to others as you can see the both s and s prime points are same points on our curve so others can decrypt the secret as here but as you can see extracting this message from this point s requires to solve elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem and it's computationally hard so we have implemented elliptic curve algemal public key encryption algorithm in python programming language from scratch in this video thank you all for watching and see you next time